Dear devotees, every month on the Hindu calendar recognizes at least one occasion, at least one celebration. Lori and Makar Sankranti are the two celebrations that are typically generally celebrated in this month of January. However, today we all have the great privilege of honoring another celebration. Jagat Guru Divas. This honored celebration, occasion, it holds special importance and significance, especially for the dear disciples, the dear devotees of Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj. It is wonderful that you all are here to honor, to celebrate, and to participate in this joyous occasion, this very important celebration. This Radha Madhav Dham, Sri Raseshwari Radha Rani Temple, this Guru Dham, this Sadhana Hall, this Prayer Hall, 
is permeated with the divine grace and the blessings of Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj. I wish to invite you all to open your heart and experience his grace and his blessings. We will begin this honored celebration with a few minutes of Kirtan. Vande Ham Satguru Charanam Jagat Guru and who is Jagat Guru? In the Mahabharat, Arjun addressed Sri Krishna as Jagat Guru. Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kansa Chanuram Ardhanam. Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. In the Skanda Puran, the divine consort of Lord Shiva addressed him as Jagat Guru. In the Bhagavad Mahapuran, Shukadeva Paramhans referred to Sri Krishna as Jagat Guru Shri Krishna when he praised the extreme good fortune of the gopis, of the Braj gopis who accepted him as their divine beloved. Jagat Guru Brahmate Buddhya Tasam Kim Varnyate Tapaha Bhagavatam so, Purnatam Purushottam Brahma Shri Krishna is the original Jagat Guru. In this age of Kali Yuga, this tradition of Jagat Guru began with Adi Jagat Guru Shankaracharya, who was recognized as the dissension of Lord Shiva. The need for appointing a Jagat Guru was felt when there was a lot of hypocrisy and misunderstanding prevalent in the name of religion. Most of those who preached had absolutely no clue about spiritual truth or any spiritual subject for that matter. So the scholars decided to select and appoint a saint of the highest class based upon divine experience as Jagat Guru. Now this title of Jagat Guru is given to that personality only who is fully endowed with the ability 
to impart divine knowledge. Gung Rotiti Guruhu, he who is capable of imparting divine knowledge is Guru. Grinati Gyanam Iti Guruhu, he who imparts divine knowledge is Guru. According to Mundaka Upanishad, Pariksha Lokan Brahmano Nirveda Maya Nastya Kritaha Kritena Tad Vigyanartham Saguru Meva Bhigachet Samit Pani Shrotriyam Brahmanishtham. So, in order to attain divine knowledge, in order to receive divine knowledge, one has to take recourse of a Shrotriya Brahmanisht Mahapurush. A God realized personality who is a scholar of the Vedas, who is perfectly well versed in all the scriptures, and one who has attained and realized God. Such a personality would be accepted as a supreme authority of knowledge, of divine knowledge, so that people could go to him and approach him for spiritual guidance. So in this way, this tradition of Jagat Guru started, it began, with the aim of ending all hypocrisy and also with the aim of providing spiritual guidance, knowledge, and inspiration from an authentic personality. Adi Jagat Guru Shankaracharya, he established four mat or four centers and he appointed four of his disciples as Jagat Guru. Thus, a hereditary disciplined system of Jagat Gurus came into existence. Now, these four were not the original Jagat Gurus. After Adi Jagat Guru Shankaracharya, there were only three more Jagat Gurus. When I say three more, I mean original Jagat Gurus. And by original, I mean those who were fully empowered with divine knowledge proved to be prominent through debate against other contemporary scholars. So the three Jagat Gurus were Jagat Guru Shri Ramanuja Acharya, Jagat Guru Shri Nimbar Acharya, and Jagat Guru Shri Madhva Acharya. These were the three original Jagat Gurus after Adi Jagat Guru Shankara Acharya. Sometime after the fourth Jagat Guru, Jagat Guru Shri Madhva Acharya, a special body of 500 topmost eminent scholars was established and authorized to appoint a Jagat Guru. And it is only when these topmost scholars collectively and unanimously accept a saint as a, the supreme authority of knowledge of all of our scriptures in our Sanatan Dharma is that personality officially appointed as Jagat Guru. Till today, this Parishat has honored only one such personality as Jagat Guru, and that is our 
ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಪಾಲುಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇಯರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ವನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಜಿ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ಡ್ ಎ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲಿ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿತ್ರಕೂಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾರಾಜಿ ವಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಏಜ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಆಲ್ ದ ರೆನೌಂಡ್ ಸೈಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಚೇರ್ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾರಾಜಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಫೋರ್ questions before the scholars and humbly requested them to answer those four questions for the benefit of over 200,000 people that had assembled there. Well, it turns out that none of those scholars could satisfactorily answer those questions. Eventually, Sri Maharaji was challenged to answer those questions himself. And that was the first time he ever spoke in public. In the year 1955, It was his first public lecture, his first public discourse. Up to this time, devotees had seen Sri Maharaji in very intense devotional samadhi. He was oblivious of the outside world and always drowned and absorbed in the supreme state of divine love ecstasy. It was after age 28 that Sri Maharaji subsided and concealed his state of divine love ecstasy to reveal his inner ocean of divine wisdom and to selflessly serve and enlighten deserving souls. In this conference, everyone that attended and the people there, they were simply amazed at this young man, age only 32, speak with such exceptional mastery of all the scriptures. Sri Maharaj's devotees were even more astonished and surprised because they had never seen him study a single book ever. They were all wondering and curious as to where he had hidden this unlimited treasure of divine knowledge. The Vice President of Kashi Vidvat Parishad, along with 12 scholars, was also present at that conference. These esteemed scholars were astounded at Sri Maharaj's vast and profound knowledge of all the scriptures. And they returned to Kashi praising Sri Maharaj's unprecedented wisdom to no end. Now, this praise, when they went back to Kashi and they were praising Maharaj so much, so this praise was skeptically received by some of the scholars who thought it was just an exaggeration. They thought, How could it be possible for a young man 
age only 32, to be the master of hundreds of scriptures when it takes almost a lifetime, or maybe not only that, to master one, one scripture. So this constant praise that they were hearing aroused their curiosity. So the following year, Sri Maharaji organized another grand religious conference similar to the one in Chitrakoot. The general secretary of Kashi Vidvat Parishad, Sri Raj Narayan Shukla, went to that conference unannounced. He just showed up because he wanted to find out the truth for himself. So when Sri Maharaji heard of his arrival, Sri Maharaji greeted him and respectfully invited him to the stage to speak first. But Sri Raj Narayan Shukla, he insisted that Maharaji speak first. His intention was to list all the mistakes that Sri Maharaji would have made and point them out before the vast gathering of thousands of people that had assembled there. So he sat down with pen and paper to list all the mistakes that Sri Maharaji as he expected was going to make and miraculously his hand did not move at all. He sat there absolutely captivated and enthralled from beginning to end. The piece of paper that he sat with, it remained blank. Sri Raj Narayan Shukla, he was absolutely and totally stunned and amazed. He decided that he was not going to speak that day and he asked to be the first speaker the very next day. So the next day, when he went up to speak, then Sri Maharaji also sat with pen and paper to list his mistakes. But Sri Maharaji's hand did not move either. His pen did not write anything on that paper because the speech that Sri Raj Narayan Shukla gave was nothing but the endless praise for Sri Maharaji. So he went back to Kashi praising Sri Maharaji's greatness and the scholars who had not heard Sri Maharaji decided to test his knowledge because the same question intrigued their minds also. How could a young man be the scholar of so many scriptures? So they invited Sri Maharaji to Kashi. And this invitation that was extended by them was graciously and humbly accepted by Sri Maharaji. They requested Sri Maharaji to speak in Sanskrit. And he had not spoken in Sanskrit before. So Maharaji willingly accepted. Sri Maharaji spoke for nine consecutive days. Nine days in a row, he spoke. So on the very first day, he spoke very basic, simple Sanskrit. 
Every day thereafter, he raised the level of Sanskrit to such a level that it surpassed the intellectual understanding of even those topmost scholars that were there. At the end of the nine days, the president of Kashi Vidvat Parishat, he called a meeting of all the scholars and uh, he invited the scholars to challenge Sri Maharaji to a debate. He said that unless there is some objection or challenge, we wish to bestow the honorable title of Jagat Guru upon Sri Maharaji. So the scholars, they said that we can definitely and surely easily challenge an ordinary scholar. But Sri Maharaji far exceeds our scriptural understanding, our intellectual understanding, and demonstrates an unparalleled grace in his personality. So how can we even think of holding a debate against him? So the very next day, on January 14th, in the year 1957, all of these scholars of Kashi, they bowed to the divine glory of Sri Maharaji and honored him with the title of not only Jagat Guru, but Jagat Guru Tam. Jagat Guru Tam. The greatest and the supreme and the highest amongst the four preceding Jagat Gurus. They recognized that the young man who was seated in front of them, who so easily, without any effort, and so effortlessly reconciled the contradictory philosophies of the four preceding Jagat Gurus was no ordinary preacher, but a divine personality. They recognized, they realized rather, that uh, no one person could possess such unlimited depth of knowledge. And as a result of what they witnessed, all the scholars joyously proclaimed the Sri Maharaji is the greatest of the four preceding Jagat Gurus. In addition, upon observing the elevated state of divine love ecstasy of Sri Radha Krishna, they also honored and bestowed upon Sri Maharaji the title of Bhakti Yoga Rasavatar, the supreme descension of the bliss, the nectar of Bhakti. To conclude, I wish to say that just as it is the law of this creation, the rule of this material existence, this material world, that everyone that comes into this world must also leave one day. That being said, God and his saints, descended divine personalities, God realized personalities, when they come into this world, they must also 
leave. They follow the same protocol. On November 15th, 2013, Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj ascended to the divine abode of Sri Radha Krishna. At age 91, for 91 years of his life in this world, Sri Maharaji tirelessly, selflessly, and unconditionally served this world with his presence, his association, his inspiration, his blessings, his guidance. As a very dear, loving, and very close disciple of Sri Maharaji once said, that Sri Maharaj's life was a divine charity. Though he was very great, words are inadequate. Words cannot adequately describe his supremacy. Though he was very great, his greatness lied in the fact that he was extremely simple-hearted and extremely humble. His greatness was such that small children felt no hesitation in approaching him to shake hands with him. They felt absolutely no hesitation whatsoever. Not only that, Sri Maharaji always, for anyone and everyone that came with a sincere, faithful heart, he encouraged everyone to go higher and higher. It is his greatness it was his greatness that does not intimidate or invalidate any amount of love, devotion, faith, surrender, confidence. He always encouraged us, anyone that came into his contact, to go higher and higher. And to have such love and faith and affinity and affection and devotion so that we could reach the highest. He constantly and consistently bestowed the deepest, greatest, the most profound bliss, the intimate bliss of Sri Radha Krishna devotion. Like bees to honey, thousands of souls from within India and around the world have experienced and drank the nectar of Sri Maharaj's direct association through his satsangs, 
his teachings, his writings, and uh, all the thousands and thousands of chantings that he revealed. Sri Maharaj's charity to this world extends to those who are poor and underprivileged through the charitable hospitals, through schools, and through so many other charitable projects, only to elevate and to uplift those who are in most need. True to his name, Kripalu, he was the ocean of absolute compassion, grace, and kindness. Although he's physically no longer with us, at least in this lifetime, but yet nothing is over because his grace and his blessings are still with us. They're still present. Sri Maharaji bestowed showered an enormous treasure of devotional literature in the form of, as I already mentioned, his teachings, his writings, his chantings, his satsangs, his discourses, his pravachans, in so many ways, he has blessed us and this world with all of that devotional literature. We have it. And everything that he left behind for us and for generations and generations of souls yet to come on this path, thousands and thousands and thousands of souls yet to come. All of this treasure, this devotional treasure, this literature, which is really an expansion of his own personality, imbued with his grace, his blessings, his inspiration for us, guidance and everything, it's all there. So only to enrich and enlighten those souls who will and who are sincerely seeking the bliss of Sri Radha Krishna. So, in essence, Sri Maharaji's <clears throat> life of 91 years was the greatest gift that this world could have. We are all extremely blessed and fortunate to be sitting here in this mandir, in this ashram. It is a symbol of his divine grace. It's a symbol of the bhakti devotion and the path of divine love realization 
the path of God realization that he showed to us. So with these words, I conclude my lecture. Bole Bhakti Yog Rasavtar Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj Ki Bhakti Yog Rasavtar Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj Ki Bhakti Yog Rasavtar Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj Ki Radhe 